Hey guys. Well, back for another update video on the Carolina Custom Kits Super Chipmunk. As you can see, I got a lot more work done. We'll get to that in there in a minute. So, um, biggest thing noticeable from last time until now is I have a cowl. And this cowl is really, really, really nice. Uh, the outline is <clears throat> probably better than I've seen for chipmunks, and I've seen a lot of them. And it is really good. Uh, the quality of the fiberglass is it's really nice. For what it is, it's really nice. Um, you know, you got a little bit, you got a sand where the two pieces are laminated together, but uh, really not a big deal. Really good quality, and it fits so nice and tight around that fuselage, all the way around. And that's just awesome. So, really happy about that. Um, I wasn't going to admit to this, but I, I have to. So, in the last video, I had the rudder and fin pretty much the way you see it now. Except now it's actually finished correctly. Um, if, if you recall, you remember me saying that... Uh, you know, I had to sand some of the ribs, and I had to cut some of the ribs to get the sheeting to lay flush against the uh, the fin post, where actually I was supposed to go over the post. And the reason I didn't is because I wasn't going to sheet the rudder, but I was doing it all wrong. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, everybody makes mistakes. So what I ended up doing is, um, I get a little closer here, you can see I capped the rudder. In other words, every single surface on the rudder now has an extra layer, which is considered a cap, you know, cap stripping. Um, so now, it, which adds to strength, and it gives more area for the covering to stick to. So it's going to look better once it's done. Um, <clears throat> so what I ended up doing is, instead of you know, tearing the sheeting off of the fin, I took a hole saw and punched a bazillion little holes into the fin and then just sheeted over top of it. So you really can't tell that I did anything different. Um, you know, it look it looks really good. But, you know, my bad. Um, when I up after I uploaded the last video, Mark from Carolina Kits uh, messaged me and said, Yeah, just to let you know you did that wrong. Damn it. Oh well. No big deal. Um, got the elevators and stabs all finished and they turned out really really well. Um, the reason I stopped working on them and moved on to other parts of the fuselage is because I didn't have the tubes. And the tubes, all they are is just uh, arrow shafts. And these fit on there so nice. Well, hold on. Nothing is glued on yet, so you gotta hold uh, you gotta hold your tongue just right to get it on there. But this will be. Uh, hold on just a second. Okay, they can be kind of a bear to get on there because these tubes just run inside and go through the ribs, kind of like they do right here. There's no sleeves, so sometimes you have to kind of rock it around a little bit to get it on there. But uh, for the most part, you know everything slides on there real nice. I mean, everything fits Everything fits good. This is all going to be glued on permanent. Then I'm going to sheet this area in here and eventually blend the fuselage into it. Um, yeah, the elevators are all capped. Or before, I just had them uh, just the... I just had everything flush to the top ribs and that wasn't right. So this I actually sheeted properly. I sheeted from the leading edge over top of the... Uh, the trailing edge post for the stab, then when you cap the control surface, it builds up to the right thickness. So, you know, you live, you learn. But yeah, it uh, it really, really turned out nice. I'm extremely happy with it. Um, I did get in the mail my push rods from Sullivan. Uh, these two are going to be for the rudder. I don't think I'm going to be using the actual nye rods themselves. I'm just going to be using the tubes to run a pull-pull system to the rudder. 
and the tail wheel. And these I bought two, I don't know why, I only needed one, but they, these are the, uh, you know, the heavy duty super strength ones, and I'm going to run these on the elevators. <clears throat> so that way I can get those installed, get them where I want them on the inside, because right now I still have, you know, I have pretty good access to the inside to put in reinforcements when I run them through. Then once they're in place, I can finish heating the fuselage. Um, but since I was waiting for the push rods and finished the tail section the right way, I decided to go ahead and start building some wings. Um, we'll get to this one here in a minute. So up until last night, both of my wings looked like this. And there's a lot of work that goes into these things. Um, I hate building wings. I mean, I, I really, really dislike it. Because there's just, for something so simple, there's just a lot that goes into them. Um, the way they go together is really cool. Um, the spar is not a hardwood. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a harder balsa. But it's two pieces that slide from the bottom and from the top and go over each of the ribs. And then once they're in there, and I was kind of skeptical about this because, you know, balsa spar is usually a no-no. But on this side here, the kit also comes with pre-cut shear webs. Of course, the grain runs uh, vertically, which gives them the strength. And on the inside, the shear webs are plywood. So once this thing is all said and done, it is brutally strong. And the same for the trailing edge. Um, it comes with all these pre-cut uh, pieces to give uh, more thickness and support for the hinges on the trailing edge. So once I got all those put in, I had a hell of a time getting these sleeves in there. And probably to my own fault, um, this kit, everything fits together very tight, which is both good and bad. The reason it was bad is I should have taken these one, two, three, four, five ribs, and I should have test the uh, wing tube sleeve in each of these ribs first, because the sleeve did not fit very well. I had to sand away a little bit of the uh, outer surface of the tube and take a dowel rod with a piece of sandpaper on it and go inside each rib and uh, open them up a little bit to get these in there. And they're still very tight, but holy crap, they they're not going anywhere. So that, that took a little bit of work. Um, no big deal, you know, is what it is. But the wings framed up really fast. Same, uh, same tab construction. Once you slide your uh, top and bottom spars onto the ribs, everything locks in so it's perfectly straight. And then the trailing edge has a laminated uh, balsa and plywood piece. And there's little tabs on the back of the ribs that slide into notches on the trailing edge. So you can't build it crooked. That's the coolest part. You know, as long as you as long as all the pieces are in their right spots, you cannot build it crooked. Put that down without breaking it. Um, so this wing panel here, I decided to go ahead and sheath the top. Um, it comes with these tabs on the uh, trailing edge and on the uh, lower spar so it's meant to be sheeting your it's meant to uh, sheet the top first so what these tabs do is it sets the wing at the perfect um, incidence because it does have washout at the wing tip in other words as the wing goes out the tip kind of twists up at the end which is called washout which is going to make it a lot more stable at slower speeds, less prone to stall. And right now, the way that I do this is I tack glue these tabs right to my bench. I mean, this wing is attached to the bench. And it's just tack glued, these tabs will break right off, and then I'll just have to, you know, scrape the glue off my workbench. But what this does is it keeps the wing perfectly flat, or should I say, with the perfect twist, so when I go ahead and sheet it, it is absolutely perfect. So um, once I get ready to sheet the other side, 
this wing, as soon as I bust these loose off the bench, this wing is going to be this shape. That's the whole point of sheeting the top with these tabs secured to the bench, is you build the wing to the shape it's supposed to be. Now when I flip it over, I have to be careful not to twist the wing as I'm sheeting the other side. So when I go to flip this over to sheet the other side, um, I'm going to make little jigs to temporarily secure to the workbench that will hold the wing upside down on the workbench perfectly in this shape. So as I'm sheeting it, I won't build a twist into it. But I'll, I'll get to that point later. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. So just like I did with the fuselage, I, decide, I opted to sheet the portions of the wing in smaller pieces just so I can use CA and get it done quick. So the trailing edge went on in two pieces. Um, leading edge was one, two, three, four pieces, and then three pieces for the center for the center wing here. Um, everything is nice and smooth. May not look the prettiest because I I didn't get this as tight as I wanted to, so I had to fill it a little bit more. Um, but the reason I did this is because it's it's another test to see how this wood filler um, reacts. As you can see, it's very light because I still need a final sand, but as long as you sheet it correctly and you're careful and you don't use too much glue and have glue squirting out everywhere, um, you glue everything with CA, give it a rough sand, and then what I did is using this wood filler that I'm really enjoying, uh, put a couple finger scoops into a mixing cup and literally you can you know spit in there or just put a couple drops of water and mix it up with the ass end of a, um, a little acid brush and it thins it to about the consistency of mayonnaise. Then what I did from there is even though my joints were all really good because I was careful when I sheeted it, I just went ahead and just brushed on some of that filler, very thin, so it goes on nice and smooth, and just kind of feathered everything out to give it a nice smooth finish. And then just lightly went over it with some 220, and as you can see, it's nice and smooth. It's really good. So the reason there's some covering on here right now is I'm still, you know, doing some tests to see how this stuff reacts to heat, because this dries pretty hard, it's, uh, which is what I like about it, and it sands super easy. As you can see by looking at the covering, um, I put I used a lot of heat because th this test right here is to see how this holds up to heat. Now, when you use too much heat, you can kind of see in the glare of my light, you can see kind of a, kind of a cloudy or a smeared area where the 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 hardness of the filler is different than the wood underneath. So if you use too much heat, you kind of get that little bit of discoloration. You know, being under fluorescent lights makes everything stick out. So normally I would not adhere the covering with that much heat because you get that. But this was to check and see how it reacts to the heat and also to see how smooth the wing is going to be. And as you can see, boy, it turned out nice. Of course, I'm just going to peel all that off there. Maybe we should do it right now. And because it was just laid on there, it, it comes off real nice. Yeah, I used a lot of heat. <laughs> I just made a project for myself. Oh well, I know how to get that off there. No big deal. But yeah, it sticks to it very, very well. Damn it. That's gonna... <laughs> I just made a freaking job for myself. That's kind of funny. But actually, that's good. That's good, because it's not, the heat does not distort the filler, and it does not pull it off the airplane. That's good. Um, so I opted to cap strip the center portions of the wing, which almost seems kind of pointless, because once you sheet to the spar and sheet the trailing edge and the portion of the center section, there's not that much of the wing really left open. But one of the nice reasons, one of the nice, um, total brain fart here. One nice feature about having an open base structure like this is let's say I do build a twist into this wing. 
Um, and instead of compensating with a ton of aileron trim, what I can do is because this is an open area, I can jig this wing after the plane is built and covered and actually twist it, which will wrinkle and distort the covering inside these bays, and use my heat gun and shrink it back down. So I can actually untwist or twist it in a different manner, but I can reshape this wing once it's built and covered very easily just because of the open bay construction. So there's kind of a plus side to that. Um, I'm getting ready to break this off the bench. As you can see, it's, you know, I use a lot of glue on that one. Oh boy, use more glue than I thought. See them tabs just break right off. Just kind of hoping it would just uh, come off the come off the bench instead of breaking the whole thing up. But there we go. So now, when I take it off and sight down it, you probably can't see. I know you won't be able to see the washout built into it, but you know it is sheeted to that perfect, you know, perfect perfectness. So now that the bottom is open, I can put the gear mounts in. Um, and before I start sheeting the bottom, I'm going to get it to, uh, dry fitted to the fuselage and just make sure everything is lining up okay to the center section. Then I'll go ahead and sheet the bottom. Yeah, I used way too much heat. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Now for those that are curious, how am I going to get this off of it? When you have covering that won't come off the wood like this, this is no problem. What you do is you take another piece of, uh, of covering, preferably like a transparent, like a clear, or uh, in, in this case I'm going to use the leftover covering from my fun fly airplane up there. And you iron it over the top of this and you peel it off right away. And it'll, it'll take all that right off there. It might take a couple treatments, but it'll, it'll take it right off. So yeah, for anybody that wonders how well covering material sticks to this filler, it sticks very, very well. That's funny. That's just too damn funny. Um, so other than that, I'm going to get the other wing um, to this stage, then I'm going to put them away for a while and head back over to the fuselage and get the push rods put in um, and probably seal up the rest of the fuselage. I'm not going to do this anything here until the wings are completely sheeted and I figure out how I'm going to physically attach them to the center because all this will have to be done to blend into the wing. So this will be the last thing I do as far as uh, sheeting on the airplane. I still have to figure out what I'm going to do. Oh man, excuse me. I still have to figure out what I'm going to do for a tailwheel because under here it's just... Uh, it's just a stringer construction, so I, you know, I gotta, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do it. I was gonna do like how the Goldberg chipmunk is, and yes, I flew this thing today. It was a brisk 40 degrees, but beautiful day to fly, getting close to winter. So I had a few good flights on my favorite little airplane here. This is the the Carl Goldberg Super Chipmunk, great airplane, that my absolute favorite. But anyways, the way it works on that is you have uh, a wire that pokes into the rudder, then bends 90 degrees, goes down and out the bottom of the fuselage, and then angles back to your tailwheel. I don't want to do all that. That's, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of work. So I'm going to use those NIROD tubes and run two tubes through the fuselage that come out the bottom that'll have cables that go to my tailwheel. Then I'll run another extra set of tubes through the top coming out each side of the top of the fuselage and run a pull-pull wire to the rudder. And both of those sets of wires will attach to a long arm on the servo. So that'll, that'll work really well. So that way the, the tail wheel and the uh, rudder are not directly connected. They're only connected by the cables. So that's where we're at. Um, everything in here fits really well. Like I said, I'm really happy with how that cowl fits. The cowl is actually too tight, and I think, just by looking at it, it might be too long. 
Um, I'll have to I'll have to compare it to the plans, but I think it's supposed to be a little shorter because the cowl is supposed to overlatch the hatch about this much, but this is as tight as it goes. But it does the cowl gets wider as it gets to the nose, so I think I'll probably have to end up trimming about this much off the cowl, then it'll slide over better. But if it's actually the length it's supposed to be, this is the beauty of it being too tight. So if the cowl is actually the proper length, all I'll have to do is sand the nose of the airplane a little bit more. So basically, I would rather have it be too tight like this because I can always sand it and make it perfect. But yeah, I'm really happy about that cowl. I mean, all the way around, it just it contours that fuselage perfectly. So that's that's good stuff. Oh, I love that. Flies fantastic. And yes, this one here is going to look just like that when it's done. Just a lot bigger. So, I'm um, going to get me some supper. I think we got some pizza going on. Um, don't know if I'll work on it anymore tonight. Kind of, Kind of out of the mood. <laughs> so, that's where we're at. Oh, and another thing. Even though this kit does come with the options of making it the uh, standard de Havilland chipmunk or the super chipmunk like this, this obviously has the tail modification to be just like the super chipmunk, and it has the super chipmunk cowl. But the plans do not say anything about shortening the wing. But there's a, there's a reason for that. There have been a lot of super chipmunks as far as full scale. Because there was never, it's not a production airplane. What makes it a super chipmunk is the modifications that the uh, the owners made to the original DHC-1 chipmunk. Now, the earlier chipmunks, like Art Scholl's first one and Harold Cryer, who was actually the very first person to modify a chipmunk, um, their original versions have the standard wingspan. But then Art Scholl's second one. And the one that Skip Volk built, which ended up being Art Scholl's third chipmunk, which is the, which is actually what this one is modeled after, um, M111 4V. Um, that's actually that was actually built by Skip Volk and purchased by Art Scholl after Skip was killed. But those had a clipped wing, so I have to figure out how much of this wing I'm going to clip. As you can see here, there's supposed to be another rib here and then a wing tip. So I'm going to cut it flush. Everything's overhanging because it's just sheeted right now. But I'm going to sand it flush to this rib and put my wing tip here and see how I like it. Because I'm not exactly sure how much I'm supposed to clip off of there. I think if I clipped it back to here it would be too short. But uh, I'll just have to kind of play that by ear. Once I get the wings finished I'll do the wing tips last and I'll just have to you know, kind of see how it looks and go from there. Um, the plans also don't show anything for modifying the ailerons and the flaps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the flaps, build the ailerons, then I'm going to cut the flap right here, right here at this uh, rib, and the flap will be permanently part of the wing right here. I'm not going to put flaps on this airplane. And then from here out, the flat portion will have to be modified and built into the aileron. And it'll just be a, you know, pretty much one long aileron. How I'm going to do it, still don't know because I haven't built the ailerons or flaps yet. I've flown enough chipmunks to know that flaps are usually not necessary. But worst case scenario, if it does have issues slowing down, I can just mix in some flap arounds. Which I don't think it's going to be an issue. So boom, that's where we're at. Getting a lot of work done. I can't believe I did that. That's too funny. That's too funny. Oh well. Easy to get off there. So probably in the next week or so, I'll bring you back with uh, the continued progress. All right. Later. <laughs>